In today's video, we're going to be covering the number eighth largest cryptocurrency project by market cap in the entire world, and that is the stablecoin USDC, also known as USD coin. What is it? It is just the tokenization of everyone's favorite corrupt fiat currency, which is the US dollar. So very, very simply put, all USDC is is it is a digital representation of the US dollar that exists on blockchain networks. I will detail later on in the video exactly where these USDC, this tokenized dollar, is minted, on which blockchain networks, but let's start from the beginning. So USDC was created in 2018 by Circle, Center, and Coinbase. Yes, that's Coinbase exchange, but due to regulation concerns, operations of USDC fully transitioned to Circle, which means Coinbase is no longer involved with issuing or operating USDC, but you better bet that they very tightly integrate it into their ecosystem. Now, stable coins might not be the most exciting cryptocurrency projects, but it's very important to understand them because they're some of the largest. Like we just covered USD Tether, and now we're covering USDC. It will also help you understand central bank digital currencies because I'll be covering those shortly and actually relaying why it can be potentially quite harmful to the cryptocurrency space as far as purists are concerned. But let's stick to USDC. So what exactly are the advantages? What are the pros of having USDC or where are some of the use cases? Well, there's not a lot of volatility because it's pegged to the US dollar. That just means that one USDC will always equal one US dollar. Sometimes there's a de-pegging that occurs and that's actually terrible for the actual trust of the stablecoin. It's happened a few times and we will discuss when that happened and the details of it in this video. But why do people flock to a stablecoin that doesn't have a lot of volatility? Well, because it doesn't go up and down drastically like some of these other cryptos do as far as price is concerned. And sometimes traders or even long-term investors during times of crazy volatility, they want to exit a position and just hold something in the meantime. So they can exit to USDC, which can easily then be traded for another crypto. So they don't want to fully off ramp and then trade in their crypto for fiat currency like the US dollar. Another advantage is USDC is supposed to be fully backed by US regulated reserve assets. And they are quite transparent, especially in contrast with USD Tether, where there's a lot of looming concerns as far as the transparency of Tether. Now, we also have to point out that USDC, it is an American company. Circle is an American company, and the US government is about to be the most pro-crypto government we've ever had. And I think that will fare very well for the companies that are American based in the crypto space. I do want to point out, and this is a con or a disadvantage of these stable coins, I suppose, is that it doesn't appreciate in price. So when I say it's good for the companies, it doesn't mean, hey, invest in these stable coins because they will appreciate in price. It doesn't. It's pegged to the US dollar. So it doesn't matter what's going on. You can't speculate and say, I'm going to invest a ton in USDC or even USDT and hope that the price is going to appreciate. It's literally glued to the US dollar, or at least it's supposed to be. Again, de-pegging occurs from time to time. Now, the disadvantage of being pegged to the US dollar is if the US dollar inflates. So if crazy inflation occurs, your USDC is gonna lose purchasing power just like the US dollar, versus if you're holding it in a crypto like, let's say, Bitcoin, that is supposed to be a hedge against inflation because of the maxed cap supply, when you're talking about something like a stable coin like USDC, it is not a hedge against inflation. So let's now dive in and fully discuss the nitty and gritty of USDC. So if we navigate here to USDC.com, 
you'll see a lot of helpful information and you'll also see that there's over 46 billion USDC in circulation today. Now, sometimes this actually goes down and sometimes it goes up. And so let's actually discuss that now. If we go over here to coin market cap, you will see that USDC is currently the number eighth largest crypto project by market cap. And you'll see that even when I zoom out, one USDC always equals around one US dollar. You can see that the max supply is nothing here because it can go up and it can go down. So let's take a look at that. This is the price chart. But if we switch to a market cap chart, you can actually see that it's painting a very different picture. If we take a look at the all time chart, you will see that between the end of 2020 and July of 2022, you saw a massive increase in the adoption of USDC. During the crypto winter cycle, there was a bit of a bear cycle. And then once again, crypto has picked up. And so there's more need and demand for the use case of USDC. So what exactly happens when someone purchases USDC? Well, the user sends fiat currency to Circle through a bank transfer or a partner exchange. Once Circle receives the fiat, it actually mints an equivalent amount of USDC. So for example, the reason that you see a rise here in market cap is because there was more minting than burning of USDC. USDC employs a mint and burn mechanism to manage its supply, ensuring that each token is fully backed by the reserves. So how exactly does it get rid of tokens? Well, when a user redeems USDC for fiat, the user sends their USDC tokens back to Circle or a partnered service. Circle burns the received USDC tokens effectively, removing them from circulation, hence the drops in market cap. An equivalent amount of fiat currency is sent back to the user's bank account. This ensures that the total supply of USDC always matches the total amount of fiat and liquid assets held as reserves. I wish the same thing could be said about USDT, Tether. As mentioned, the reserves consist of cash held in bank accounts or short-term US Treasury bonds or equivalent liquid assets. Now, I mentioned partners, and by partners, I was just referring to the other exchanges or wherever you can go ahead and grab USDC or sell USDC. But that also begs the question of where are these USDC minted? So they're minted on multiple blockchain platforms to ensure widespread usability and compatibility across the decentralized finance ecosystem, and that's DeFi. So we have Ethereum, and this was the first and most widely used blockchain for USDC. DC. It is an ERC-20 token when it is minted on the Ethereum blockchain. USDC also operates on Solana and it operates as an SPL token. And I've actually made videos explaining in detail what Ethereum is and what Solana is. So make sure to watch those. But another place USDC is minted is Avalanche as an ARC-20 token. It is also on Binance and it operates as a BEP-20 token. Something I wanna point out is that Stablecoin actually moved their headquarters from Ireland to New York City. That is definitely going to be a good thing for regulation, especially because we have a very pro crypto leadership coming into office now. And that is definitely great news for USDC because you know that Trump's administration loves to back US based companies. I also want to point out that Circle's USDC outpaced Tether in 2024 market cap growth. And although Tether is still king, and we can see that because its market cap is over 137 billion versus USDC that just has 46 billion, it's catching up quite rapidly though. We can see here that USDC circulation grew 78% year over year, outpacing the growth rate of all other large global stablecoins. It will be interesting to see how RLUSD does in the coming years, and that's a product by Ripple. A really easy way to research this type of stuff for yourself is you take a look at a crypto, like let's say Tether, and instead of looking at the price, take a look at the market cap and then set the date range down here. You can go to two years or however long you want and then actually compare it with, in this case, we're going to do USDC 
and we'll take a look percentage-wise how the two are growing. So you can see from January 2022 until now, USDC actually grew by nearly 80%, whereas Tether is actually just hovering at a little bit over 10%. Now, obviously, if you move this chart and make it more recent, you're going to get a different story. But since 2020, you can see USDC has been outpacing USDT in market cap growth. But again, it depends on how you play with the timeline, because if we're looking at September 2021 till now, now it looks like USDT has actually outpaced USDC. So that's why a good way to do it is to set it to the one year range or whatever you want and then actually analyze it that way. On coin market cap, you can actually drag the timeline bar down here in order to get a clear picture. Recently, USDC stablecoin reached 1 trillion monthly transactions. I do want to point out that there has been a history of USDC stablecoin actually momentarily depegging from $1. The most recent one occurred on March 8th, 2024, when it dropped to 74 cents on Binance. This does worry people. This is probably the most worrisome moment in USDC history, and that's when it lost its one-to-one -one peg to the US dollar after the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. Circle, the issuer of USDC, disclosed that $3.3 billion of its $40 billion reserve was held at Silicon Valley Bank, which was taken over by the FDIC due to a liquidity crisis. This announcement caused panic among users, leading to a massive sell-off of USDC, and the stablecoin traded as low as $0.87. Cents. The market was concerned about whether Circle could recover the funds, which put the stablecoin's full backing in question. The situation was actually resolved when the US government and Federal Reserve actually came to save it, which is so uncrypto like this is supposed to be a decentralized place right but the federal reserve announced that all svb depositors would have full access to their funds circle confirmed the safety of its reserves and usdc quickly regained its one dollar peg this incident highlighted the risks of centralized stable coins relying on traditional financial institutions and underscored the importance of reserve diversification and transparency in maintaining trust. So it was actually interesting if you purchased USDC when it dropped to 87 cents, almost instantaneously, you would have made a ton of loot because it recovered and bounced back up probably around 15% to a dollar. Now, something that people really don't like about USDC is that it has the ability to freeze funds. On multiple occasions, Circle has actually frozen USDC funds. Now, how the heck does it do it? How does it just blacklist people and freeze USDC? So because USDC operates within the framework of existing financial laws to comply with AML, that's anti-money laundering, counter-terrorism financing, CTF, and other regulations, Circle retains the ability to freeze or blacklist specific USDC addresses if required by legal authorities. This is very concerning to some. This makes it extremely centralized. It should not even be considered crypto. Circle can blacklist a specific blockchain address effectively freezing the USDC held in that wallet. This action prevents the funds from being transferred or accessed. This totally undermines the decentralized ethos of crypto. And in my eyes, it raises concerns about censorship and financial sovereignty, because who's going to decide when and what they freeze? Now, how the hell does USDC actually do this? Well, it has the ability to freeze funds because it's coded directly into its smart contracts. And so once an address is blacklisted by Circle, any USDC held in that address becomes frozen. This means the tokens cannot be transferred, spent, or accessed by the address owner. This is definitely concerning for a lot of people, but I would argue it is better than USDT, which I covered in a separate video. You should definitely watch that full explanation of USDT for 2025 because Tether is actually shady as Fook, it seems like. So with that being said, let me know in the comment section what you guys think about Circle, what you think about USDC. Are you worried about it? Are you totally fine with holding a ton of USDC from time to time? I'm curious on your thoughts, and hopefully I will see some of you in the next video.